Hello friends, in this video we will see how to perform information retrieval using latent semantic analysis. First, let's understand what is latent semantic analysis. Latent semantic analysis is a technique in natural language processing of analyzing relationship between a set of documents and the terms they contain by producing a set of concepts related to the documents and terms. It takes into account the distributional hypothesis that states words that are close in meaning will occur in similar pieces of text. Let's look at the steps involved in LSA. We start with a large text corpus including hundreds of documents from various areas of study. We then represent this corpus as term document coherence matrix. Then we perform certain frequency transformations of the matrix, after which we decompose the matrix to key dimensions and compute similarities between terms and documents to get the semantic relatedness score. We use concepts of linear algebra for these two steps. To be able to do computations on the corpus, we use the vector space model or VSM. VSM is an algebraic model for representing documents as vectors in a space where dictionary terms are used as dimensions. So we express D documents in the space of T dictionary terms. Here is an example of vector space representation of documents. The ith element of the matrix gives the frequency of ith term in jth document. For example, the 2,1 element of the matrix signifies that the term algorithm occurs thrice in the document D1. We process our matrix before we compute similarities. Term filtering is removing the trivial terms. Term conflation is stemming the terms. The term frequency inverse document frequency transformation reduces the weight of more frequent terms and increases the weights of less frequent terms and also normalizes each column of the matrix. The similarities among terms and documents in the VSM is computed using the cosine similarity which is the cosine of the angle formed by two vectors. It can be expressed as dot products of the normalized vectors. For a set of Q documents represented in the term space by the normalized matrix Q, the pairwise cosine similarities to the D documents represented by X are obtained as the Q cross D matrix R such that R is equal to Q transpose X. Note that in this expression, document to document similarities are computed based on inner products of columns in Q and columns in X. Therefore, when two documents have no common terms, their similarity will be equal to zero. Consider the following two definitions of energy. The corresponding term dimensionality vectors are S1 and S2. The cosine similarity is zero as there are no common terms, but we know that the two statements are very closely related. To address such questions, a different approach to representing terms and documents is needed, one that takes into account not only the terms that are literally present in the documents, but also the terms that are related to the terms that actually appear through a statistical analysis of all term usage patterns observed throughout the corpus. Such an approach was introduced under the name of LSA. In LSA, term frequency matrix A is first subjected to singular value decomposition. A is equal to U sigma V transpose. Now let's see how will SVD help. To gain insight, treat the terms or rows of an T cross D matrix A as T points in a D-dimensional document space and consider the problem of finding the best K-dimensional subspace. Here best means minimizing the sum of squares of perpendicular distances of points to the subspace. We begin with a special case of the problem where the subspace is one-dimensional, a line through origin. The problem is called best least squares fit. Consider projecting a point xi onto a line through the origin. To minimize the sum of squares of distances of points to the line that is alpha, one could maximize the sum of squares of the length of the projections onto the line that is beta, given d is the constant. Similarly, for best fit subspaces, we could maximize the sum of the squared lengths of the projections onto the subspaces instead of minimizing the sum of squared distances to the subspace. The length of the projection of ai, the ith row of a onto v is mod of ai dot v. From this we can see that the sum of length squared of the projections is the squared norm of av. The best fit line is the one that maximizes the norm of av. We now define the singular vectors of an t cross d matrix a. Consider the rows of a as t points in a d-dimensional space. Consider the best fit line through the origin. Let v be a unit vector along this line. Then the first singular vector v1 is defined as v for which the norm of av is maximized and the first singular value is the sum of projections of points on the line given by norm of av1. The greedy approach to find the best fit two-dimensional subspace for a matrix A takes V1 as the first basis vector for the two-dimensional subspace and finds the best two-dimensional subspace containing V1. The fact that we are using the sum of squared distances will again help. For every two-dimensional subspace containing V1, the sum of squared lengths of projections onto the subspace equals the sum of squared projections onto V1 plus sum of squared projections along a vector perpendicular to V1 in the subspace. Thus, instead of looking for the best two-dimensional subspace containing V1, look for a unique vector, call it V2, perpendicular to V1 that maximizes the norm of AV among all such unit vectors. Using the same greedy strategy to find the best three and higher dimensional subspaces defines V3, V4 and so on. The greedy algorithm does work and yields the best fit subspaces of every dimension.
We continue calculating singular vectors similarly and stop when we have found v1 to vr as singular vectors such that further application of this computation returns only the zero vector. R will be the rank of matrix A. For any matrix A, the sum of squares of the singular values equals the Frobenius norm of the matrix. Let A be a n cross d matrix with singular vectors v1 to vr and corresponding singular values sigma1 to sigma r. Then uy is equal to avi by sigma i for i is equal to 1 to r are the left singular vectors. Then the svd of A is given by A is equal to sum over of i is equal to 1 to r sigma i ui vi transpose. In matrix form, singular value decomposition is represented as u sigma v transpose where u is the matrix of left singular vectors, sigma is the matrix of singular values and v is the matrix of right singular vectors. The SVD reproduces A using a space of latent semantic dimensions. Now let's reduce our dimensions. We had the expression for SVD of A as u sigma v transpose where u is m cross r matrix, sigma is r cross r and v transpose is r cross n where r is the rank of matrix A. Keeping the k most important dimensions associated with the k highest singular values and discarding the remaining r minus k produces a truncated version of the term frequency matrix A dash or AK. Matrix AK is a least squares based approximation of the original matrix A such that the sum of square differences between the respective elements in A and AK or the Frobenius norm of A minus AK is minimized. Matrix AK transforms the original term frequency by taking into account a hidden topic structure on which terms and documents are projected. For example, when a column in A that represents a given document shows only the occurrence of terms mass, gravity and Newton with certain frequency weights, the corresponding column in matrix A k will show some non-zero value for the term physics if enough documents in the corpus mention the four terms together. The exact way in which the frequencies in A are translated into modified frequencies in A k depends on k. Assuming the existence of a large number of documents where mass, gravity, Newton and physics appear together and a smaller number of documents where some of these terms appear together with chemistry, latent semantic dimensions at smaller k values will tend to be related to all five terms whereas the higher order dimensions will tend to distinguish between physics and chemistry group. Is this ability of SVD to place mass, gravity and Newton in the context of physics that has enabled a number of applications of LSA in various areas. Thank you for watching the video.